Hi, my name's Cody. It's been a couple weeks since I've done one of these little videos that we call Coffee and the Word. Uh, today is the first part of a four-part series from Psalm 23. I want to share the first verse with you guys today, but before I do, I just want to comment that there's so many good resources and books and commentaries available about Psalm 23. My goal is not to add anything uh, to all that. You know, really, what more could I add? Uh, but my goal is to really just lead a time of reflection in hopes that you and I will see God more clearly today and that we'll be able to uh, both walk in His peace uh, today. Each week, I'll read a verse or two, share a few thoughts, a few observations, and I hope that my work here will add to your understanding and well being uh, of this passage and how Scripture applies to your life. I want to encourage you to read this for yourself. Read scripture in general for yourself. I hope this is not a, a replacement for anything that you're already doing, but, uh, but I hope that this is something that uh, is maybe another tool uh, that allows you to dive in a little bit deeper. Uh, something maybe that uh, uh, adds to your own study and meditation on the Word. So let's look at this first verse today. It's a, it's a short verse, and um, when I was planning all this out, I thought, you know, really, what, how, how could I spend, uh, you know, even five minutes, ten minutes talking about one verse? And as I got into it, I realized that really we could spend hours talking about this one verse. And this one verse here, the very first one in uh, Psalm 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. Let's just focus even on this first phrase, the Lord is is my shepherd. Now this is a metaphor, a metaphor we're familiar with. It's a, the use of a word or a phrase to describe another idea, to describe a person. Here the psalmist David uses the word shepherd to describe God. And of course, God is so much more than a shepherd. Um, yeah, this, uh, this metaphor is very limited in uh, what it can describe, but God so often uses things that are familiar to us to describe himself. We see this all uh, throughout scripture. Um, and we see that Jesus himself expanded on this metaphor of God as shepherd uh, in John 10. Uh, we'll look at other places as well. Uh, this is a metaphor that, that is in the Old Testament, the New Testament, all over the place. The Lord is my shepherd. If we think about shepherds for a minute, you know, why, why is shepherd a good analogy? Well, it's great for uh, describing that God is our provider, that God gives us what we need. Um, he, uh, you know, a good, a good shepherd leads the sheep to grass, leads the sheep to water, uh, make sure that they have uh, what they need. God is our provider. Secondly, God is our defender. That's another one of the jobs of a shepherd. Uh, when uh, maybe a, a wolf or another animal comes up and wants to uh, uh, take one of the sheep away from the flock, the, the job of the shepherd is really to step up and to defend the sheep. Uh, sheep are not known for their great defenses. It's not like they have great big fangs or uh, sharp claws or uh, poisonous, uh, you know, whatever. You know, sheep are pretty defenseless animals and they need a defender. In John 10, we read this verse, uh, Jesus speaking, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me for my father has given them to me and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from the father's hand. It's just a great picture, another great uh, uh, reminder that God is our defender. Third observation about shepherds um, and about God uh, as a shepherd is God loves his sheep. If one gets lost, he'll leave the 99 to chase down the one and bring it back into the fold. And the other thing that I think is so important for us to remember is, uh, as we think of God as a shepherd is that God leads. I kind of made reference to this with the, you know, in the God the provider part, leading us to uh, green grass and leading us to water. But I want us to just dive in this just for a second more. Uh, thinking again of, of John 10, um, uh, Jesus speaking, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads him out. So God as shepherd leads his people. In Revelation 17, we uh, read this, For the Lamb on the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. That's a good shepherd right there. Now, if God is our shepherd, I think it's worth commenting on the fact that we're sheep. Um, 
and uh, a lot of people have tried to use the term sheep in a negative way recently and um, you know there's it's not all bad uh, <laughs> uh, scripture has plenty to say about us being sheep and uh, first is this that sheep recognize the voice of the shepherd read that verse just a moment ago uh, another verse in john 10 um, verse 27 my sheep listen to my voice i know them and they follow me you know so sheep recognize the father's voice or they should learn to at least Sheep rely on the shepherd for defense. You know, sheep eat, they grow wool, and they make more sheep. That's about all they do. Again, they're not known for their great strength or uh, their excellent uh, offensive or defensive skills. They're just, they're just meek, mild animals. Sheep are fragile. That's uh, something else to keep in mind. And speaking of ourselves as well, if we are, uh, relate to this analogy at all, sheep are fragile. Long before I was born, my parents briefly had a, a farm with sheep. And some of you guys knew my mother, and if you did, you knew she was the most calm, gentle person you ever met. But um, when she talked about sheep, <laughs> uh, uh, that, that gentleness kind of uh, went away momentarily. Even years later, I think she was still angry with how fragile those sheep were. They'd so easily get injured uh, or die for no explainable reason. And uh, you know, it's kind of funny hearing her talk about them because she'd get a little bit riled up about the sheep. Sheep are fragile. Sheep uh, need a good shepherd to keep them safe. And we can go on and on with this metaphor. You know, we know that Jesus called the lamb, uh, the lamb who was slain. There's hardly a better picture of a more delicate, innocent, vulnerable sacrifice than a lamb. And Jesus for us was that pure and spotless offering that willingly gave his life in my place and in your place. So what's the application of this? Uh, this, uh, this idea that um, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. You know, going back to that first phrase in this verse. The second phrase, I think, is the response. The second phrase is attached to the first. These are not two separate sentences. They're not two separate ideas. The second part is tied to and inseparable from the first part. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. Our way of life, especially as American, encourages us to pursue contentment in many possessions or much money or whatever that thing is. The trouble is that our hearts are never satisfied. We have this lust in us for more and more and more. More money, a faster car, a nicer house, more friends, more social media likes, uh, revenge, justice, love. These things are just things. They're not evil in and of themselves, but, but the unquenchable thirst for more really just decays the soul. I'm reminded of Paul's words and his example, really, in Philippians 4. He says, I've learned to be content in whatever circumstances I'm in. I'm still working on that, and I would imagine that you are too. Whether things are going well or things are going poorly, let's remember this verse. I have everything that I need. How? How in the world do I have everything that I need? It's because Christ is enough. Christ alone satisfies. Christ alone is sufficient. I want to go back to this first phrase for a second. Notice the possessive in the first phrase. The Lord is my shepherd. Is he your shepherd? Will you surrender your life and your ways to the good shepherd? And remember the, the, the phrases from John 10. He's calling you by name. In response today, I want to encourage you to take a few moments to pray. And I want you to pray with open hands today. So often we pray with closed hands. And closed hands really show that we're still holding on to things. We still want the things that we want. We're still um, uh, trying to do things our own way. And those things might sink you if you're not careful. You know, people drown in rivers every year because they grab a branch as they're floating by, thinking that grabbing onto that branch will save them. But when they grab onto that branch, the, the tighter they hold, the deeper the rushing water pushes them down. It's a dangerous place to be. Open hands. And if we pray with open hands, we show that we're surrendering our own ways. God may lift those burdens out of your hands, the burdens that you've been carrying. God may give you new burdens, healthy burdens, things that he wants you to, carry about, to care about. And God may take your hand and show you a better way. That's the place that we want to be today. 
Today's not the day to give up and to give in. Today we press on, we run the race, we strive for perfection in Christ Jesus because the Good Shepherd, the Lord, is calling us onward, upward, and forward. Grace and peace with you today as you go. I trust that you'll find this encouraging.